Hey there, welcome to my tutorial on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro CS3. Uh, a couple of notes before I start. This is going to be a basic tutorial. It is going to be a multi-part tutorial, meaning that uh, there's going to be more part, more, more than one part to it, because you know it's kind of hard to fit Adobe Pre Premiere Pro all in one video, and it's going to be a basic one. I think I've said that before, but by basic I mean just showing you basic editing, basic video rendering, and basic importing and all that, and other things that people with the intellect of a fifth grader could figure out. It's not going to be how to do blue screen or green screen because that has to do with chroma key and a Premiere Pro isn't really the best for that but I, I'm, I'm just not really going to go into that. So first when you open up Premiere Pro you will have these this little window come up and have three little folders and okay that's not really a folder but whatever. First, the one that I'm going to start out with first is the help folder. What this does is brings up a bunch of text things that you can click on and it'll bring up links to other things. And if you would rather go that way, but that their their text ways are, are like always unorganized, just hard to find. For, I really hate reading when I just want to get it over with. But anyway, the next one is open project. If you click on that, a list of your projects will appear, but I deleted all mine. This recent projects area will bring a link to the most recent projects you have used. So if you called one of them, say penguin, and then penguin appears, and you saved it, the recent one, the most recent one would be penguin, it'd appear right there. So you made another one called duck. Duck would be above penguin, and it just, I think it holds maybe five of them. And that just brings you a link to the most recent project, obviously. New project, obviously, starts a new project, and I'm going to click on that. And up here appears a bunch of folders. If you, this is your first time using it, you probably aren't going to have that custom folder, so you're just going to have these basic ones, maybe more depending on what your computer has in it. The DV and uh, the DV and TSC and PALS are a little bit confusing to explain, but you know, I wouldn't really mess with any of these unless you're used to that kind of stuff by, I don't know, using a older editor like Sony Vegas or something, and then you're coming to this one. But I, but when you first come into this, yeah, when you first come into this, uh, click on the custom settings tab, which is up here, and a place where you can completely customize what you're doing will appear. Now in this little box you want to click highlight general just by clicking on it. And all of this probably won't be set like this. I just did it so it is set like it, but you know. You want to set your editing mode to desktop, your time base 29.97 or 30 frames a second, 640 by 480, and then you want to set square pixels you want to set it two square pixels, 1.0, so it sets the aspect ratio to four point to four to three. Or else, if you set something else, it'll set to like widescreen. Those leave everything else the same. Don't even bother with the capture area unless you're going to be using this to capture, which I do not. For video rendering, I always choose video for Windows. If you've got H.264 around there, use that. Use it. Use it. Use it. And I. Since mine's only video for Windows, I choose Divix Codex. That's the only one that will appear. And also, you want to choose millions of colors and optimize stills. For default sequence, you want to set it to three tracks. That's what I have mine as. For the audio, for the master, it sets whatever you're recording in. Mono, if you record it in mono, which is having one speaker, set it to that for best audio quality. If you have like multiple speakers to stereo, if you have surround sound and you recorded it in surround sound, choose 5.1. But mine's in stereo. So I for the tracks, just leave everything at zero except for whatever that is on this side. So if you chose mono, you'd want to set that one to three. If you chose, if you have stereo, just set that one to three and leave everything else zero. And then you want to click on save and then type in a name and a description. This one's best for YouTube, so you probably want to do that one. For the description, you'd probably want to put in what it has, like 640 by 480 maybe, uh, H264, 
all that stuff, etc., etc. But I already have one made, so I'm just going to go to load, and as soon as you save it, a custom folder should appear, and I'm going to click on it. And now, uh, you want to come down here for your name, type in something, I'm just going to name mine Penguin. Wow, I put a bracket right next to it, that's kind of weird. Anyway, and this concludes, not the whole tutorial, but part one to my multi-part tutorial on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro CS3. The next part will hopefully be in, well, it will, so let me say it again, the next part will explain how to use it, how to do basic editing and basic transitions and other related, related items like that, I guess you could say. And thank you for watching this and be sure to watch the next part to my multi-part video on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro CS3.